Thank you very much to Niles E.B., one of my newest patrons who is helping to keep this channel alive and going strong. If you want to do the same, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega and force me to do more videos for as little as a buck a month. So, as part of that, let's review. Amidst all the companies who are getting in on the third-party Transformer craze, there are still companies out there who want to produce their own original transforming objects or toys or whatever we have to call them these days. But yes, there are toy makers who are making shape-changing things that are not aping off of Transformer IP. Enter 52 Toys and their Beast Box line. And just as it sounds, it is transforming beasts and animals that turn into boxes. Well, perfect cubes, as it were, as this guy is. This is Echo Blaster, their parrot former. And yeah, um, you can probably guess that just by the coloring. It's pretty distinct. So, of course, we start in cube mode, which, granted, there's not a lot to look at. I will give you that. It is a fairly basic little box of folded up plastic parts. I do like the idea of using the exact same geometric shape to make so many different things, because this line has done lots of things. We've got penguins and pandas and gorillas and crayfish. There's a crayfish in there somewhere. Like, it's kind of crazy. But this one appealed to me the most, so this is the one I wanted to try. And, yeah, as you can see, nothing really to it. And it's a pretty solid, you know, pretty solid box, you know. I can toss it around like so, and none of the panels are flying out or anything. It's just tabbed in solidly enough to hold its shape. A little bit loose in a few sections, but, you know, uh, nothing major. It's staying intact. They also sell little... Uh, containers to store your cube in case your cube needs to have a cube that's slightly larger surrounding it but we don't have that so we'll stick to what we got we do have a few emblems here there's caution warnings on there like it's an actual major uh, major mechanical thing a faction emblem which i think is just his personal logo and i think a few others that we'll get to once we get this guy transformed besides that he's just yeah a blue and gray and red box so let's actually get him out from this and we'll figure out exactly what he's all about uh the transformation on these is pretty simple at least as far as i can determine from one of them uh yeah so we'll go ahead and undo those panels fold those out we'll do the same down here this is what will become the tail so we fold that out splay it out just for the sake of doing so rotate this around now uh gotta get the wings up so we have room to rotate this around 180 degrees. Feet down, feet down. Now it's going to form the belly of the beast. All the way up. This folds around. Oh, I should keep, I should make sure that's still in frame. Yep, so fold that down, clip together. There's your chest. Make sure it's all nice and snug against all of the parts. Let's make sure the tail's out so we get some good balance going on him because he does kind of tripod a little bit. Beyond that, it's just cleaning up and getting everything into just the right spots for your personal preference. And that's going to be our beast mode. So just like that, our cube is now a pretty fully fleshed out parrot. It's actually kind of cool. Like, from appearance, yes, he kind of just looks like a parrot. It looks like a robot parrot. You don't really expect it to have any kind of transformation to it at all. It just looks like a robotic bird. So again, I think it's kind of neat that it pulls off a bit of a chameleon trick in that, yeah, it's completely, uh, it's completely cube. So looking at the head, yeah, it's pretty well painted and designed. He looks very much like a parrot despite his robotic features. Bright yellow beak, eyes fully painted up, and I will show right now, since we're already here, his mouth does open. So you have a fully working beak as well. Excellently done. Lots of red, lots of gray. He pretty much doesn't have any, like, hidden colors or anything that pop out when he transforms. You know, obviously, like, if you knew he transformed as a cube, you'd probably guess right off the bat, yeah, he looks like a parrot. I see wings. I see red and blue. Pretty traditional colors for what we got. And yeah, again, pretty well formed. 
see where the faction logo ended up. I like the yellow. It's just because it's giving the impression. A lot of this is giving the impression of the natural designs and shapes of a parrot and still sticking to a more mechanical feel with the sharp angles. You know, there's no attempt to kind of blend it into wings, even on the back here. This is sculpted in, whereas on the other side, it's painted. And yeah, still, you have that look of the wing, but it's still very much mechanical. I like little bits of translucent showing through as well. So he does have this kind of interesting energy effect to some of his wing. Uh, that extends to the tail as well, where we can hinge and splay things out and arrange them as we want to give our kind of, you know, personal appearance in the back section of the bird. As far as function goes, he lost that nice waist joint in transformation, unfortunately, but we have ball joints in the hips, we have ball joints in the ankles, and then that digit to grade backwards knee works pretty well. He doesn't, he can't fold it straight up. There is a bit of extra plastic in the hinge that will prevent it from straightening completely, but you can get it into pretty much any natural stance a bird would have. The head, you might have noticed, is ball jointed, so it has a full range of motion in every direction. Well, I say every direction. Uh, he can only turn so far before he starts hitting parts. And you can only go up so far, of course, but again, you're getting a lot of natural motion out of it. The wings are where I really like it. We got the big hinge on the, on the side here. That lets his wings go into the more natural flapping. We can collapse them like so to bring them in a little bit. I like that, I like that kind of like accordion effect too. A little bit of gimmick for you. And then we have that uh, extra hinge here. So he has a pretty good good range of like a flapping motion for any kind of pose you'd like to do and then of course uh what i really like is that you don't always want him flying you don't always want him like like this just looks aggressive like this looks like he's about to come at you so we kind of need to do away with that so we can do away with that by folding up this section and folding it against the body and then bringing the hinges down like so and then we have a nice Parrot at rest kind of pose. I, I like that. Like, because you grew up with Transformers for so long. You're just kind of used to, like, a bird Transformer is always going to have its wings out. Its wings will hinge up and down if you are lucky. But for the most part, you get just what you absolutely need to to convey bird. Whereas there's actual function to this being a bird. You know, you can get little, like... You can tilt the head a little bit. You can have it looking up. You know, you have these little character things that, you know, an animal toy is kind of important to convey a little bit of sense of life, you know, and that's missing from a lot of, you know, beast transformer toys, you know, where I just kind of feel like they treat a bird the same way they treat a jet. As long as it looks the part, then just go ahead and run with it. Don't complicate things. So it's actually something refreshing about a toy line that focuses on the animals and still has this kind of neat transforming element to it. Now, um, just to get it out of the way, because I know some are going to uh, point it out. Yes, he does use a lot of translucent plastic. Uh, the wings, all the blue that you see is translucent. I'm not terribly concerned about it, though, because a lot of the tabs aren't really held in that tightly. They're not really uh, holding the thing together like rock hard. Uh, the only real like... Like, the hinges here on the tail are maybe the only part that has a little bit of real force to it. You know, like a real friction or stress. And it's really not all that much. And they are pretty they are pretty thick as far as uh, clear plastic hinges go. And there's no ball sockets. That's the important thing. On translucent parts, ball sockets are your enemy. Even these big hinges, like, they get a lot of friction because they're big. But they don't really hold that much stress. So... I honestly think he's going to be fine for quite a while. You know, he's only like a $25 purchase. So at that price, yeah, he's. I'm not terribly worried about him. I should also point out he does come with one accessory that I can't use because it involves one of those storage boxes. And that's a little perch. You know, he comes with you so you can actually like if you have the storage box, plug it on the side, plop him on top, and your little buddy can perch on your desk just like an actual bird. So... If you've been curious, because BBTS got in so many of these, and I've seen so many ads for them on the site, and I've seen them pop up in, like, new arrivals so often, like, I've been curious. I've been very curious. And I like what I got here. 
um, they are very solidly built. They're very high quality. What you are buying is pretty much what you see. Like, there's no real surprise. But if you're into it by what it looks like, you're probably not going to be disappointed. Echo Blaster's fun. He's solid. And, yeah, for me, I just like the idea of this thing forms a cube like all of the others. And I, could just, I can just stack cubes up all day if I really wanted to. But, yeah, uh, no real shocks. I'm just super into this. I'm like... There's just something about this that really does appeal to me. So if it looked interesting to you, then give it a shot. Why not? You might actually be surprised.